nation. Today, Mr. President has pledged uh, to uh, ensure that in the 2019 budget that the Abai Kodibene Road that had been forgotten for 45 years is rehabilitated and even dualized. And I want you to know that Abai used to be the capital, um, the commercial hub of the entire South, South, and Southeast. But because of bad roads, that uh, almost all the industries in Abai and the entrepreneurship had come to an end. And so my people could not access Abai. If you come now and try to move from Ikari Bene to Abai, it's impossible. And that has existed for over 40 years. So any administration that can make efforts, in fact, when we were in the council chambers, and when the president mentioned that he had a standing ovation from the stakeholders of my state. And that is why I said that in 2019, it will be very difficult for any political party to penetrate the South South because of the fact that they've, they've seen an administration that is determined to bring about infrastructural development for the good people of the South South. He has already pledged also to extend railway from from uh, maybe uh, Port Harcourt all the way down to Calabar uh, through Aquaibong, something we had never seen before. He has uh, also pledged and a lot of work is being done to complete the East-West route that was started by President Obama and George's administration. And it's also going through the, uh, the uh, phase, uh, phase five of that road, which is extending it from Moron all the way to Calabar. And so some of the things I'm telling you, for some of you who have fantastic roads in your area, who already have the amenities, you will not understand. All of, some of us will be very excited to see railway in a lifetime in our state. And that can only come from the APC administration. We are very excited to see the completion of the dualization from Ikari Bene to Calabar. The road is a dead trap, and that is already ongoing through this administration. The promise and the pledge to do the Abba Ikari Bene road is ongoing. He has also even undertaken to take care of the federal road that starts from Ikari Bene all the way to Abia State, uh, Tree Wukem. Uh, as I speak now, two of my local governments. Nobody's leaving there. Schools have closed down. Churches have closed down. One of them is Ukanafun. And another one is uh, Etmekbo. Because the road that traverses their area is a federal road. The insecurity has taken over that area. Hoodlums live there. Over 25,000 people have been rendered homeless. There is no single school walking right now. And there is no single church they're walking. So when the federal government says, we are going to intervene and we are doing this road for you, I believe that that government should be supported. And so it was easy for me as a leader to move from the PDP to a government that I believe would not only intervene in the federal infrastructure, but would give meaning uh, to what we may call Nigerianness, because our people felt uh, totally disillusioned and marginalized in the past. And look at some of the appointments that we have in my state today. I'm not afraid to say it, that under the PDP, even when I was a governor, we couldn't even have a personal assistant from our wife said in the presidency, not even a special assistant, despite my massive support for the administration of the, of the then PDP in Nigeria. But today, you can see we have a Minister of Budget and National Planning. We even have a special, uh, 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 senior special assistant in charge of Senate matters and a lot of other managing director of NDC, managing director of uh, oil and gas and all sorts. So uh, I believe that to whom much is given, much is expected. There is no way this government can recognize my people and do all these things for my people. And I, as a leader, would not see the need to support that government. So for some of you who may not understand, I want to repeat myself. I move in the national interest because every politics is local. I believe it's important for us to stabilize Nigeria before we start thinking of election. I believe it's important for the federal government to be supported to succeed if we go out there through prayers and actions to make the president to fail, we are indirectly saying that we don't want to bequeath a better country to future generations. Nigeria should be like a building block. If you go to London and you see Terminal 5, Terminal 5 was built for 25 years. That means prime minister after prime minister had to add its own uh, effort. But here in Nigeria, what happens? We have thousands of abandoned projects because administrations do not build on what others had left behind. And because the citizens do not see the need to support government, there's a time for election and there's a time for action. And that's the simple truth about it. When government is about to work, allow the government to work. Support the government to work, irrespective of uh, political affiliation. And that is why 
I moved from the PDP to the APC to make sure that this government works before election. It shouldn't be all about election. It should be first about Nigeria. Let others also move in national interest. And I didn't just move like that. I was a leader in the Senate. I resigned my position in order to show that, yes, indeed, I, I meant business. And indeed, I'd move in the national interest. Let others who also have positions in the Senate, who wish to, who wish to uh, also cross carpet from one political party to the other, also resign their positions and take a cue from what God should have like did. I think that answers uh, your question about what I said in the Senate today. There is need for us to restructure the Senate. I'm sure you know that. There is need for us to have seats. It is not there. Behind where I sat today is my very good friend, distinguished Senator Shitu. It was after uh, the little noise in the Senate that he told me that he's now in the PDP. And I said, so why are you sitting here? <laughs> so don't you think there is need for us to restructure the Senate so that PDP will sit on the side, the Abga will sit where they should sit, and then the ruling party which still forms the majority in the Senate will sit where they should sit, and then the leadership is restructured in a way that the majority can have their way, while minorities will have their say. That is the practice all over in modern democracies. You can have a political party with 10 members, and now one with 80 members, and the 10 members will now produce a leadership. Does it happen anywhere in the world? Nigeria is not different. We are running a democracy. That was why, what I meant when I said that I will speak when the Senate is well restructured and well reconstituted.